Welcome to my video, The Gold Stick. The blinking light is just something fancy. It doesn't really make it function any better, but, it, but it's cool. Now, it has an iron core that runs through the middle. And there are 20 copper washers. And there has to be an even number of copper washers. There can't be three, uh, five, seven. There has to be an even number like two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, or it will not function correctly. And the washers are anchored in. If they weren't anchored in, they'd fly right out of their place. Now at the end is a 14 karat gold ring. It's off my wife's necklace. It's about the size of an eraser on a pencil. It has 10 parts of base metal. And the reason why they put base metal in is because it would be too soft to wear as jewelry and it would wear out fast. So they put base metal such as copper, silver, and nickel in it. Now, there's not enough nickel in it to attract to a neodymium magnet, which I will show you. I'll take the ring off. And I'll take the neodymium magnet. As you can see, it attracts to the master magnet, but it will not attract to the 14 karat gold ring. So we know it doesn't have enough iron in it to attract to a neodymium magnet. I'll stick it back on. There we go. Now, even though I designed the gold stick, and it will pick up gold in water and dirt, but you got to be touching the gold for it to work. And if you can't see the gold in dirt, how are you going to touch it and pick it up? You're not. So like I say, the way I have it built now is just for a demonstration. But in reality, it's not practical. You might say it's like Alexander Graham Bell's telephone. People came along and they, you know, improved upon it. And what do we have today? We have wireless phones. We have smartphones. So hopefully somebody will come along and they'll take my pioneer work and they will improve upon it. But before I demonstrate the gold stick, I'll tell you a little bit about the master magnet. You can call it a master magnet, gold magnet, non-ferrous electromagnet, whatever you want to call it. Now, people have commented me and said that this was designed after Leonard R. Crone's 1951 booklet. No, it was not. I designed this long before I ever seen the booklet. You might say it's like a weed eater. There's a lot of weed eaters on the market, and you can purchase them at Lowell's, uh, Home Depot, and uh, elsewhere. And they're all different. That's why they all have different patents on it. So this is different. Now, it has 650 turns of magnet wire, enamel coated. It has 240 UF capacitors. Now, what I was doing a show in 2010 at IMPEC in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I was being filmed by Jim Norton, The Tonight Show, Jay Leno, and it was heating up on me. And I was afraid it was going to burn out. So I was there three days and I was showing it to a lot of people, so I had to come up with a cooling system. So what I simply did was put a, a computer fan in it, and it cools it down real well. Now I can run it a lot longer with a fan in it than I could without the fan. Now, one thing when I was doing the show at Impact, I would ask people if they had a pacemaker. Now, if you stand up here like this, it ain't going to bother the pacemaker, but if you're back five or ten feet, it's not going to bother you. But to get right up close to it, it could affect the pacemaker. So I, I had to warn people and ask them, does anybody have a pacemaker here? And yes, there was a few people that did, but they were standing back far enough where it, it didn't bother them. But you need to, you know, be cautious. You need to think, be safety-minded, you know. So, now, 
One of the complaints and arguments is that the one ounce American Silver Eagle, the reason why it attracts to the master magnet is because it has a lot of iron or impurities in it. Well, let's see if it does. This is a neodymium magnet and it attracts to the master magnet, but it does not attract to the silver dollar. Now, if the silver dollar had enough impurities in it, like iron, now, wouldn't it attract? But it doesn't. Now, the master magnet consists of actually two magnets in one. You have an iron core and you have copper washers. The iron core attracts only ferrous metals. The copper washers, in combination with the iron core, attracts both ferrous and non-ferrous metals. And as you notice, it doesn't have a built-in core. The reason is because I designed it for, to put in snap-in cores for different applications. You can make them flat, you can make them any, any design you want, long, skinny, for whatever application that you want, you can design it for that need. Now, I'm going to uh, turn the uh, master magnet on, and, and like I said, it's 0.999 fine, meaning there can't be hardly any, uh, you know, ferrous metal in it. Now, I'm going to turn it on. Let's get it around here. There we go. And it attracts. Let me fix the thing out a little bit. There we go. Uh, okay. Now, another argument is it's got vacuum. And that's one of the biggest arguments in the comments that were sent me. I've been called a fraud, a liar. Now, you know it's strange that people will disagree without evidence why they disagree. If you don't have any proof of your argument, then why argue? If you have proof, then, then give your proof. Show why I'm a fraud. Well, anyway, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn the magnet back on. Let, let me fix that a little bit. I don't know why it's doing that. Here. It wants to be ornery. Hmm. Strange. Let me... Bring it down a little bit. Okay, that's probably enough. That attracts. Okay, I'm going to stick this piece of paper behind it and show you that there is no vacuum sucking it in. See, it attracts. I'll pull it out. It attracts. I'll stick it in again. It attracts. There's no vacuum. I should solve that argument, folks. Now, I will take the one ounce American Silver Eagle off. And, like I said, it has a snap in core. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, this, this is one of the snap in cores that I have. This is one of the snap in cores. And I can snap it out. And this right here is a uh, aluminum washer or ring. And as you can see, it is not magnetic. Now I'm going to place the aluminum ring on the iron core and snap her in. Now I'm going to turn the master magnet at an angle so you can watch the demonstration a little bit better. Let me check the camera. Let me turn it a little bit more so you can see it. I want you to be able to see it. Okay, looks good. Now when I turn the master magnet on, it should attract. Yes, it does. That proves there's no vacuum.
Okay, I'll take the core out. Now I will demonstrate the gold stick. Now, I don't even have to, the gold stick doesn't even have to touch the master magnet. It's almost like it's remote control. Now watch the gold ring, the 14 karat gold ring, which I said is about the size of an eraser on a pencil, attract to the washers. It attracts. Now I have two rings. They're both the same, 14 karat gold. I'll stick them on. Stick them both on and see if they both attract. Yes, they do. They both attract. And that's my gold stick, ladies and gentlemen. And make sure that you click on Larry Wandell below this video to watch my other videos. And there you have it. The gold stick. Thanks for watching.